in the trenches with Ryan Roxy. I want to move on a little bit to, and it's up to you whether you want to touch it or not. Uh, there was a break. There was definitely a break after the three albums, uh, you know, after um, Kick Out the Jams, Back in the USA, and High Time. I think High Time was, was probably aptly titled because it was a high time for you, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> and then what I like about your story is that I've heard, you know, you say, look, I went to jail, but it didn't change me the way you think it was supposed to change someone for the, you know, completely reformed. But what did it do to you? And what, you know, and what did it make you coming out? Oh, it changed me. Um, the penitentiary experience is so traumatic that it changes everybody that experiences it. And it didn't change me for the better. You know, I went in a kind of bright-eyed, bushy-tailed young man with big hopes and big ambitions and and uh, and a kind of inflated sense of my own importance. Um, and um, prison has a way of inculcating in you uh, a sense of meaninglessness that that you really you are a problem you're um a crime you're uh, a prison number you're a bed space you're a cell space <clears throat> and that uh you have no you're of no use in the world that you're a big problem for the world and <clears throat> not to mention uh you know, that the culture of prison um, can build in you a sense of uh, certainly uh, violence, racism, bitterness, resentment, defeat. Um, these are the, the, the characteristics that uh, that prison can build into a human being. You know, even the architecture of a prison itself is designed to make you feel as though you have no value in the world. You know, the, the, the prison architecture is, is uh, stark beyond belief. You know, it's an anti-human atmosphere. Uh, you know, they, they strip any sense of humanity from you. And, you know, it's, uh, it's embarrassing, it's um, degrading, uh, and, you know, all this stuff can play on a human being's psyche to cause real damage. I came out certainly more cynical, um, Certainly, Obviously, maybe resentful, even to a point. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, and and um, and it's taken me a long time to to go back. You know, I made a record a few years ago, a free jazz album, and I tried to. It was called Lexington, which is the name of the facility that I served my sentence in. Yeah. Um, I, I tried to articulate my feelings <clears throat> in my first language, which is music. And, uh -huh. and, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And, uh, and just, you know, get it out and go back and, and try to understand what, ha what happened to me. You know, how did I end up there? How did it uh, harm me? Um, what can I do to, to, come out of this better, uh, you know, it, prison is no joke, you know, people make, there's a lot of humor surrounded prison and there's a lot of um, humor involved in it. I mean, you, you know, humans have to laugh to, to uh, get through uh, the worst 
times that we go through. But, um, you know, sending someone to prison is not a joking matter. Prison rape is not a joke. You know, oh, don't drop the soap. <laughs> That's not a joke. It's no, also sure. not what people think it is. You know, a pr prison rape is, is not automatic when you go to prison. It's not, you're not going to be confronted with it. It does happen. It's a real thing, but it's not as Hollywood and uh, television uh, presented. You know, this these scenes that we've all seen where the new guy, the new fish is, right. is entering the prison and he's walking down the cell block and all he's getting, he's getting berated by everybody down the row. Yeah. All these thugs and, you know, they're looking over the railing and going, yummy, yummy. That never happened to me in the, in the three prisons I did time in that never happened. And I don't know anyone that ever did time that that happened to. I mean, this is a complete fabrication. Right. Right. Well, I know that the prison that you were in had sort of like a crazy history. This, uh, the federal narcotics farm at Lexington, Kentucky, right? It was actually on this in the forties. Uh, I think Leona Helmsley actually was incarcerated there as well. And now is this something that actually happened again? I loved clearing up when I talked to the source and I'm talking to brother Wayne Kramer here, folks. Uh, did you actually meet up with a former member of the MC5 while you were serving time in one of these prisons? I did. Yeah. Who was that? It was the bassist, Michael Davis. Uh -huh. Michael had uh, gotten into his own jackpot with the uh, DEA and ended up being sentenced to the same facility I was in. You know, musicians have, have gone to prison from forever. We have a place. <laughs> <laughs> reserved for us in prison and you know there's a there's a there's a lot of really great artists in prison right now today i i see them all the time i work with them all the time oh, mm -hmm. and to just just as a side aside to who you might meet in prison i happen to serve my sentence a big chunk of it with a man named red rodney his name was Robert Chudnick. He was a jazz trumpeter from Philadelphia who replaced Miles Davis in the Charlie Parker Quintet. Wow. He was a formidable musician wow. and played with a, a expertise and facility that you don't hear trumpet players play with even today. He was, he was in the Dizzy Gillespie era of trumpeters with phenomenal technique, you know, he could read fly shit. He, he understood and had committed to memory the entire American songbook. Um, he knew thousands of songs and he became my musical father and my mentor and my teacher. And, and it was certainly the high point of my experience to be able to play and work and study with him. So I went into prison, fairly adventurous rock guitar player, came out, competent musician. <laughs> was, was music still at the forefront when you got out or were you disillusioned at that point? Um, or was it when you did get out, I, I'm, I'm definitely going back to playing or did you take some time off? No, no, I couldn't wait to get back to work. I loved my work. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> I want. I, I I was still in the halfway house, and a guy came over and said he had a band, and they had a regular gig at a bar in Detroit. And would I come and be their special guest on Friday and Saturday nights? I said, Hell yes! <laughs> and I got you know that got me um, freed from the restrictions of the halfway house where you have to sign in and sign out every night, and so I could stay out till four in the morning and play my gig and. Well, I can, I can imagine one of the biggest temptations, <laughs> not wanting to go back to prison, but then playing with Johnny Thunders and putting together gang war at that point, uh, that would must have been a trip because at this point you start making records, you start producing, you start playing and being a force in the 
punk rock world. I think it's the late 70s, 79, perhaps. Okay, early I came 80s. Out in 78. So, okay, yeah, so. The 79, I was trying to work as a producer. And, you know, I started that band with Johnny that was um, uh, doomed to failure. Born to lose. Born yeah. to lose. <laughs> Snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> that sounds like my football team. Actually, you know what? We have the similar, if you're a Detroit Lions fan, because Alice Cooper is, I'm an Oakland Raider fan. We always seem to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Yeah, yeah that's I, our I, famous I, saying. I have no allegiance mm. to professional sports franchises. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> that means you're up I, I like sports. I like, you know, I like seeing people who do athletic events well. I enjoy all that. I like going to the games and, and, you know, I go to professional boxing cards and, I, you know, I like the competition. I just have no use for the professional franchises. Good for you. So it exploits the workers. To this day, you know what? Speaking your mind, speaking the truth. Wayne Kramer here on In the Trenches right now. I'm Ryan Roxy, and I've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar, and I want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you. Check out the System 12 Guitar Method.